So every four months, the array is reconfigured, which means that we pick up some of the antennas and move them either farther out or closer to the center. The reason for doing this is to change the resolution of the array. Different science needs different kinds of resolution. Some people are interested in extremely high resolution to, to discern the finest scale features of the structure of distant quasars, uh, H2 regions, ionized vast clouds, star forming regions. And for this, they need the antennas far apart. Some researchers prefer, or their science uh, includes uh, diffuse regions of emission. And for these people, the antennas are brought close together. So approximately every four months, on a more or less regular schedule, the two transporters are used to pick up some of the antennas and move them to different pads. This is one of our two transporters. It's a unique machine. It uh, comprises four trucks of six wheels each. I'll explain in a moment how we actually turn corners with this. The basic idea of this, of this machine is pretty straightforward. You see the flat deck on there. The uh, transporter moves down the rails, slides underneath the antenna, uh, the antenna is then unbolted from the uh, three concrete piers on which it normally sits. The transporter is raised up on hydraulic jacks, lifting the antenna up about six inches, enough to clear the bolts, and the transporter then backs up and takes the antenna to the main line. Now the way the antenna transporter turns a corner is quite unusual for a rail vehicle. The engineers invented this right-angled turning system, uh, which uh, works in the following way. The transporter moves over the main line, and this is the main line heading down, uh, say, towards the center of the array. It's a double track. The transporter uh, trucks are each over the four intersections of the two uh, double tracks. A hydraulic jack lifts up one side of the transporter, three or four inches, just enough to clear the flanges of the, six, of the 12 wheels on one side. The two trucks of six wheels each on that one side are then rotated by 90 degrees and put back down again. The other side uh, of the transporter is then raised two or three inches. The other two trucks are rotated 90 degrees uh, and the whole assembly uh, rolls off in a 90 degree uh, different direction. So the two transporters, which are used to uh, pick up our 200 ton antennas and move them about, uh, each have a name. This one is called the Jack of Diamonds. The other one that's in the maintenance barn right now is called the High Plains Drifter. Uh, they're both the same. They are both built on site for this very special purpose and I do not believe that there's any other uh, antenna transporter of this type anywhere else in the world. This is one of the trucks of six wheels. There's four of these. Each is on a bearing and on the side in between the two trucks is a large hydraulic jack which, which drops down to lift the side of this transporter up enough so that the flanges of the wheels clear the rails and allow the, the, each of these two trucks on one side to turn by 90 degrees. Now, there are these three yellow pads. These match the three uh, contact points on the base of the antenna. So when the antenna, uh, when the antenna transporter slides under the antenna, the uh, three pads on the antenna's triangular base matches these three yellow points. The antenna is not bolted down to this structure, to the antenna transporter. We let gravity do that. Um, in any event, it probably would not be particularly useful to bolt the antenna down. The antenna is like a large sail. The top of the antenna is very susceptible to wind. So as you may well imagine, we only move antennas under calm conditions. Uh, the antenna transporter has its own power. So these generators here are not only providing the hydraulic power needed to move the antenna and, and move the bed up and down and transport the antenna along the rails, but also provide the electrical power to the antennas. The antennas have these cryogenic, eight cryogenic systems in them, uh, and it is very important that these things not warm up during the antenna transport process. Antennas, the length of time it takes to move an antenna can vary anywhere from a couple of hours to about half of one day depending on the distance that the antenna has to be transported. If you're moving it in the shortest distance, then I think it takes only one or two hours to actually pick up the antenna, move it out, transport sideways a couple hundred yards, or, or, or maybe 500 yards with a new pad, put it down, get it reconnected, everything is fine. But if we're going the long, longest distance from the tightest configuration that we're in now to the longest end, or vice versa, 
this is a uh, this is an operation that takes a good part of the day. The total time it takes to change a configuration varies then from uh, two or three days when you're changing from a small to the next smallest configuration uh, to something over the order of two weeks when we're moving from the second largest to the very largest or from the very largest to the very smallest.